Good morning, good afternoon, how are you guys doing? Hope you guys are having a wonderful Saturday morning. Going into afternoon. Shabbat Shalom. Grand Rising. Whatever your greeting of choice is. I want to talk. <clears throat> I want to talk to you guys about what does it take to set you off? How much can you withstand before you were to just set it off? Um, if you had a child who's in kindergarten and they painted something, finger paint maybe, um, if they were in class, they were physically going to school, and they finished their painting, and it was just everybody was just so excited about it, right? Everybody was like, Oh my god, that is such a beautiful painting! Look at that, that's good job, good job! And you get five stars, and they're just beaming pride because they did a really good job with the painting, right? And they take that painting and the teacher, because the teacher even raved about it, and the whole class is like, ooh, ah, that's so beautiful. That's really awesome. And they paint. So the teacher takes the painting and puts it, the, that's the only painting that the teacher places on a board. And on the board, the, there are words that she's put underneath the best painting in the class. Okay, so the, the student is feeling really good about themselves because they've gotten the rank of the best painting in the class, and because all of the classmates are, oh wow, that's such a beautiful painting. You did a good job, good job, and everybody goes home, goes to bed, gets back up in the morning, comes back to class, and. Everybody walks into the classroom, and when they look to the wall and look for the painting, it's not on the wall anymore. It's been torn down and torn up into shreds and thrown on the floor. And the person who, the little kid who painted it, walks into the class and they see their painting is torn into shreds and it's all on the floor, right? And the kid is crushed. The kid starts crying. The kid starts wailing, as a matter of fact. And everybody else in the class, including the teachers, is sitting there with their mouth open and they're, oh! and the kid is just going off. And then all of a sudden, the kid starts swearing. You know, it escalates from crying and wailing to swearing and throwing chairs around the classroom and throwing a literal temper tantrum. I can't believe they tore my picture. Why would you tore my picture up? I worked hard for that picture. You hurt my feelings. And the kid proceeds to tear up the classroom. And then in tearing up the classroom, they put others in harm's way. And the kid just overreacts. Yeah, okay. The, the, the kid put a lot of thought into the painting. The kid is understandably hurt. But did the kid's reaction to the vandalism against their painting warrant it? Now, they have to remove the child from the classroom because the child is having a temper tantrum and the child ex gets, ends up being suspended for their behavior, for their overreaction to the attack on their art, to the attack on their gift. What is the moral of the story, y'all? What do we... 
you know, and we we could look at it and at the store and say, you know, that kid, something, something was wrong with that kid. Because that kid overreacted to their painting being torn up. You know, you, you heard the saying that we have to pick our battles. We have to learn to pick our offenses as well. Let me tell you something. If all it takes for someone to offend you and get you all out in attack mode and acting all unseemly and putting others in harm's way just because your feelings are hurt, because someone attacked your art, someone attacked your gift, or maybe someone called you a name, or something fairly insignificant as that, and you get all out of character and all out of shape and put others in harm's way and maybe even commit a crime to retaliate because someone hurt your feelings or someone attacked your gift or your art. What are we teaching our children and our grandchildren when we, well, their reaction was warranted and they were offended and they were hurt. So I understand why they did that. What? What are we teaching the young people? There's too many people that think that they are one with their gift or their talent. Yah gives us gifts, and Yah gives us talents, true. But we are not one with those gifts and those talents. That's not our identity. Those are gifts and talents that are endowed to us by Yah. They're not who we are. It's just a gift. And we, we get to the point where we start worshiping the gifts and the talents that Yah has given us. Instead of worshiping him, we worship the, the creation more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. When we do that, we get in trouble. And we're teaching a generation of people to worship their gifts and their talents more than worshiping the giver of those talents. We worship the creator. Now we think that we created ourselves. Let me tell you something. If people would get out of their feelings and recognize and realize that we are not our own, that we are bought with a price, and that whatever we have, whatever gifts, whatever talents, whatever capabilities and abilities that have been endowed to us, they were given to us by the Creator, they are His, not ours. Then when someone attacks said gifts, we don't feel the need to defend those gifts. We don't need we don't feel the need to retaliate against those gifts. We don't feel the need to lash out at anybody who calls us a name. If it's not the name that your mama and your daddy gave you, why are you even responding? We need to teach our children these things. Now, if they talk off and will do what they want to do anyway, acting like they've never been taught right from wrong, then, you know, that's on them. They suffer the due consequences. But we need to at least teach them to be warriors. You see, a warrior don't sit back and fight every little battle. A warrior doesn't sit back and pick up every little offense. A warrior does not have time to answer to every little thing somebody call you. If it's not on your birth certificate, why are you responding? If you know it ain't true, why are you responding to every accusation? If you put the truth out there, the truth does not need defense. It doesn't need the thing. It stands alone, and it stands the test of time. Just tell the truth. Put it out there one good time, and then let the truth stand in defense of you. You don't need to defend yourself. You don't need to defend your name. You don't need to defend your gift and your talent. Yah gave it to you. Let Yah defend you. You waste time, my brother, my sister. You're wasting precious time and resources. Answering irrelevant folks. If they don't put their hands on you, people say, Oh, don't put your mouth on the man to God. Don't put your mouth on the woman to God. What does that mean? <laughs> it's crazy. 
mean? What does that mean? That's some charismatic religious foolishness that we come up with because people are still in their clues. They're still worrying about what people have to say about them. Let them talk. Let them talk all they want to. Their talk means absolutely nothing. If you know what your purpose is, if you know what your gift and your talent is, if you know your assignment, then you need to walk in that. And don't worry about folks. What they got to say? Folks got blah, 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 blah. I have something to say all day. What they say is irrelevant. I pray that you are put in a pavilion for the strife of tongues. And that you don't worry about what folks have to say. What they have to say is totally irrelevant, darlings. You're not in a war. We're in a time. To worry about what Chris got to say. I'm going to leave this with you and then you can go on about your day. If you're listening, if not, that's all you're doing. Um, Chapter 3. In the 40s and the 50s, well, probably in the 50s and the 60s, Jim Crow, you know, we had a little something, something, black people. We had homes, we had jobs, some of us may have had businesses. And there was these Jim Crow laws coming along, and there was still some white people that still knew what our triggers were. They called you something. Even in the 60s, if they called you a wrong name, it triggered something. If they attacked your, your business or your home or your gift or your talent, they just haul off and want to beat the heck out of them. And then they turn around and they was able to say, hey, but this so and so and so and so hit me, or they went to hit me, or they attacked me. You felt the need to retaliate just because they called you a name. As long as they didn't put their hands on you, they didn't physically harm you, you don't have to defend yourself until someone physically harms you or attempts to physically harm you. They can talk all day long. Talk is cheap. You see, family? It's not until somebody comes at you physically. That's when you need to defend yourself. It's the only time you need to defend yourself. Any other time, don't even pay it no mind. Pay it absolutely no mind. It's a waste of energy. It's a waste of breath. It's a waste of time. And just, you got to learn to stop being offended so easily. This is what the immature does. Like that story I told about the kindergartner who went into the temple tantrum because somebody tore up their, 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 their picture I teach our kids to be like, oh, okay, you tore it up. I could paint, I could paint another one better than that one. The gift, you just tore up a manifestation of the gift, but you didn't take away the gift. Honey, they could tear up what you create, but because God, because y'all gave you the gift, you can create something else that's even better than what they try to tear down. So why are you worrying about what they got to say? You create something that's even more powerful than what they tore down. And let y'all defend you. Let y'all defend you. I promise you they'll stop. I promise you. Y'all have a great day. Be safe. Be blessed. Shalom.